Hey there, Liz. Hey, Mr. Robot. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Definitely. What's your New Year's resolution? Uh, I don't make them anymore because I yeah. just, do you, do you, do you make resolutions? Uh, I mean, I have a little bit more inspiration than the rest of the year at the, the beginning of January. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, what do you have for us here? Um, well, so something interesting is, uh, I get synchronicities all the time. And the other day I was driving and basically two times in the same day, I saw the name Rupert on basically two signs uh, during the same day. And the first time I saw, I, so when you, when you experience a synchronicity, there's like a weird state of knowing that it was something out of the ordinary and it wasn't just, you know, a uh, coincidence. So anyways, I two times saw the name Rupert and Jane goes by the name Rupert. Uh, one second. She goes by the name Rupert. Didn't Seth refer to her as Rupert? Yeah, sorry. Uh, someone was talking to me for a second. But uh, so the name Rupert is how Seth refers to Jane because that. And th by the way, this is who channeled Seth. From Seth Speaks. From Seth Speaks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, long story short. Um, it's a very, very particular name that you don't see anywhere nowadays. And uh, by the second time I saw it, you know, in the same day, I just knew that Rupert, this individual who also goes by Jane Roberts in her last incarnation, was probably trying to get my attention. So can we connect to Jane Roberts and see what she wanted to talk about? Yes. Um, so she was trying to get your attention. She wants to answer questions just like Seth does on Seth Speaks um, when we ask Seth. Yeah, that's so cool. And, you know, that actually kind of sets it straight for me because when I was seeing Rupert twice, I was immediately thinking that it was Seth who wanted to talk to me. Can, can we confirm if it was Seth or Jane Roberts who was trying to talk to me? Who was trying to talk? Was it Seth or you, Jane? Me, Jane. Okay, cool. How interesting. Um, uh, what does she most want to talk about? She wants to answer your questions. Okay. She perfect. believes she can bring a different perspective in. Okay. Let me just arrange my screens around a little bit. Seth is here as well. Okay. Can you ask Seth if he heard me that same day say, you know, what do you want to talk about? No, it was her. Okay, well, that question was kind of designed in such a way where I was wondering if they can just hear me, if you just, just talk to them, you know, just, you know, I don't want, I just wonder what the process is to initiate conversation with spirits, if they just hear you, or if you need to get their attention first. That's a good question. Uh, do you just naturally hear? No, normally you, you're calling them in. Unless it's like somebody who is attached to you and, you know, uh, like your mother, your father, 
your spouse, your child, um, you're calling them in. Okay, perfect. Well, it's very cool that Jane wants to talk. Can you ask Jane if she prefers to go by Rupert? Prefer to go by Rupert? Yes, she does. Yeah, so that's what's interesting is that's that's how Seth knows her, that they had a lot of lifetimes as that person being Rupert. So that's that was kind of how this whole video started. Anyways, um, so let's talk about before birth and what we know about our lives before birth. Can we ask Jane if she's familiar with the pre-birth planning process? She's familiar with the pre-birth planning process. Very familiar. She's going through it now. Can you ask her what degree of control you have when you plan your life before you are born? A hundred percent control. And we see the web of people that we are can possibly interact with. And is that when we make our soul contracts? I feel like those people are also designated or, you know, to us as well. They're people that we have made soul contracts with over many lifetimes. Okay. A lot of them. And... Like, what we're kind of wondering is how we can, you know, a lot of people are trying to change the route that their path, that their life path has taken them on. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we learn manifestation techniques, um, the law of attraction. Is that what it's called? Law of attraction, I think, right? Law of attraction. Um, I also came across something this week through one of my readings, which was theta healing. I don't know if you've ever heard of theta healing, but it seems to be very powerful. Is that a frequency? You know, I'm not sure. I would, I would think it is a frequency. I think the lady explained it to me in such a way that you are trying to ascend your consciousness through different levels. And when you reach a particular level, that's when the healing can take place. Uh, can you ask Jane or Ruber if, if we can alter our lives through the law of attraction? In the current lifetime through the law of attraction. You can try. It may not always work. What does Jane, I, and uh, for the just ease of conversation, I'm just going to have to refer to her as Jane because Rupert, I don't know if it's a P or a B and it's going to drive me crazy. Can we just refer to her as Jane? Yes. Um, ask her what she thinks of the book, The Secret. What do you think? It's not accurate, not wholly accurate. It doesn't get to the root cause. It's more of a conscious mind healing. Mm -hmm. It's not a internal soul level healing. Um, so what's interesting about the secret is they were actually going to put a chapter in um, written by Abraham, who is channeled through Esther Hicks. Can we just ask Jane really quick, what does she think about the Abraham who's channeled through Esther Hicks? Uh, yeah, she likes that very much. Does she think that what uh, Abraham says is more accurate than what's found in the book called The Secret. 
says is more accurate than what is down in the book called The Secret? No. Well, what is what does Jane think Abraham, the collective Abraham, uh, has wrong compared to what Jane thinks? And I don't know anything about Abraham, the collective. I, I've never read any of that stuff. Um, what do you think that the Abraham collective has wrong? Again, just it's too focused on the conscious mind. So here's some really cool premises that we can actually just attack. We can just, these are, this is so nice. This is actually like a, uh, what do they call it? Um, Cliff Notes version of all the Abraham stuff pretty much right here. Um, so let's actually just get Jane's perspective on, on a few of these. Um, a lot of these, I think we could all agree on. Uh, I'll just ask the question and just get at Jane's response. You are a physical extension of that which is non-physical. You are a physical extension of that which is non-physical. Yes, that is correct. Is the purpose of our life joy? Is the purpose of our life joy? No. Yeah, that's debatable for sure. Um, do we create with every thought that happens? Do we create? Sorry, what was that? Do we create with 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 our with each thought of ours? Do we create with each thought of ours? No, that was already predetermined. So one of the most interesting things that Abraham says is that our emotions are a direct guide to showing you if you're if you're in vibrational frequency of of like your life path. Can you ask Jane if if our emotions are like an indicator of of us being on our correct path? That's a good question. Our emotions are an indicator of us being on our correct path. Yes, that is correct. So yeah. the optimum emotion is gratitude. Happiness too, right? Um, gratitude, sort of like happiness. A natural but, you know, subtle happiness it is underneath the gratitude. It's a more natural happiness than, you know, just a fleeting moment of happiness. It's a constant stream of happiness. You're comfortable. So Abraham says that every night we get like like all of our problems are kind of not on us, like are unstuck to us. And when, when we wake up, um, you kind of have that choice to bring all the drama or be you know in your natural relaxed well-being can you ask ruber if when we wake up if we're our most at peace for the day when we wake up most at peace for the day yes most of the time but if we were to learn how to maintain that same peace would it affect our life path. That moment of peace throughout our entire day, would it affect our life path? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, and something that I just thought of that is also interesting on that same 
vein is something Bashar says. And Bashar says that if you to find out, you know, if the world around you has changed, you have to find you have to see if your reaction to things are different. So basically the the premise is that you have to learn how to like be at ease, you know, be at, you know, in gratitude, gratitude and like your thoughts are all, all these things are flowing and fluctuating off of each other that creates your reality. Um, can you ask Jane how much our emotions or our thoughts affect our reality? How much do our thoughts affect our reality? Now she believes a great deal. What do you mean? Oh, okay. That it does affect a great deal of our life. Yes, but only a couple of emotions, only a couple of thoughts. Again, it's that gratitude. But do our thoughts affect our reality? Do our thoughts affect our reality? Well, as in, do our thoughts change our reality or do our thoughts affect our reality? They're kind of confused by this question. Sorry. So a lot of these individuals that are channeling, they all have this perspective that you are on the leading edge of manifestation in the right now, in the now, and that your thoughts are like water droplets on a pond emanating the reality that's around you. And so that's the theory is that our thoughts are literally kind of creating the reality that's around us. Hmm. So that's the question. <laughs> so by, so like focus thinking as in purposefully like putting out affirmations in that way, uh, is that what you mean? Because no. thoughts are thoughts. I mean, well, thoughts yeah, all just all the thoughts that are flowing through your head all day. Did, are they um, integral to physical reality? Physical reality. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. And you know what's so interesting about this right here? Is this is like the opening to Seth Speaks. Is he says, you know, his whole point of the book was to prove that you are an eternal soul. Um, so can you ask Jane... If uh, if she envisions a future where her soul might not exist anymore. Ooh, do you envision a future where your soul may not exist anymore? Yes, that is correct. But is she okay with that? Is she okay with that? She doesn't really have a choice. I mean, we're all ultimately working for the same goal. Yeah. Um, so what is uh, Jane's perspective on source energy? So what's your perspective on source energy? It's relevant. Is it synonymous with infinite intelligence? Ooh, that's a good question. Is it synonymous with infinite intelligence? Yes. Okay, so um, kind of back to what we were talking about with before life planning. Um, we're kind of figuring out and wondering if in Jane's opinion, can we mind probe 
our plans before we were born and alter those plans? That's a good question. Can we mind probe our plans before we were born and alter those plans? Yes. At the point where we are being programmed with our life path. Yes. And from Jane's perspective, first of all, she's kind of doing that right now. Right? Yeah, she's in the middle of negotiating soul contracts. What kind of life does she want to have next time? Uh, she's going to be male. Uh, she's going to have a tough childhood. She's going to be abandoned. I feel like she's going to be adopted. But I don't feel like the family are going to be very good. And it's going to be a life full of struggle. Will you be a medium in this lifetime? No, she will not be a medium in her forthcoming lifetime. See, that scares me. Because <laughs> I'm like, I love being a psychic medium. I always want to be a psychic medium. Can I be a psychic medium in my next lifetime? Yes, I can. But will I want to maybe pick this when I get over to the other side? I may change my mind. Being a psychic medium is very difficult. You are in service to a lot of people. Maybe I don't want to be in service to a lot of people. Maybe this is the lifetime where I want to grow and sort of be isolated instead of, you know, being of service because that's what you are. Now, there's a lot of psychic mediums out there that are not in service, right? They're too scared to um, use their abilities, and that's part of a blockage that they have to get through. And maybe that's the blockage that they have every single lifetime. But for me, right now, sitting here on the earth plane, I want to be a psychic medium in the next lifetime. But, you know, our when we're in the spirit world, we don't have all of these emotional attachments to the life plan that we are making, right? We just think it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. You know, Oh, I know I'm going to be poor. I know I'm going to be, you know, abandoned at birth and, and I'm not going to have parents. And then I'm going to be adopted by these horrific people, just like she's making now. Oh, I know I want to be uneducated. I know I want this. I want that. We have no emotional attachment. And then when we come down here in a human body, that's when we experience the whole negative aspect of emotions right and and it becomes too much and we're struggling and the soul is tired and we've made a mistake right and and now we're trying to manifest and change now through manifesting and changing we can also become extremely enlightened and that's part of the soul journey as well but for a lot of us, we become extremely enlightened, but nothing changes. And so it becomes very frustrating. Yeah, I believe that. Um, I mean, we live it, don't we? All of us live that. You know, something interesting right here I just noticed is... Uh, Abraham describes themselves as a group consciousness. And uh, you actually got that too. You know, that you always said it felt like a collective. Mm -hmm. So little tidbits of uh, little hits here and there, you know, it's always fun to find them. Well, somebody did have a question for you. They text me right before I, uh, I called you tonight. They said, please ask Mr. Robot, the entity Joseph, who was trans channeled by Michael G. Rickia, R-I-C-C-I-A. Who is he and is he of source? I have never heard of any of this. So... Do you know this person? No, but um, 
that reminds me of a question someone asked us in the Discord. We can hit real quick. Is there any medical <laughs> uh, reason why Pepsi would make someone live a long time? <laughs> oh, somebody asked that. Is there any medical reason as to why Pepsi would make someone live for a long time? Yes. It's because the sugar in it. <laughs> the preservatives. Oh, my God. Does that mean that you should go out and drink that nasty stuff? No. Ugh, ugh. It tastes so horrible. All of that stuff. I don't like soda at all. Yeah, I don't drink any sodas. Oh, yuck. I so, drink uh, carbonated water. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, that's about the extent, you know, tea, carbonated water. Um, <laughs> The occasional lemonade on a hot summer day. Uh, the Joseph communications on exploring possibility. Is he from source? No, he's human. He's he's human. He doesn't have any special, um, you know, is he directly from source? I mean, if we are all from source, okay? Or those of us in a human body, most of us are from source energy. At one time, we were energy balls and we were all attached to source and then we were released and then we evolved into many, many, many different lifetimes and eventually we evolved into humans. I wouldn't what? consider that, that we, we are still source at that point. Is Michael channeling anyone though? Michael G. Resia? Yeah, a collective. So this, so what is, um, Jane's perspective on the Joseph communications. What's your perspective on the Joseph communications? He doesn't actually know where the information is coming from. He just channels a collective who he thinks is good, but you don't know where this info is coming from. Oh, well, you know what's funny? Like Seth Speaks, he has a website called Joseph Speaks. Uh, maybe Seth might laugh at that. Oh my gosh, really? Wow, okay. That is so weird that what somebody is, asked me that question and it's all related in that way. What does Seth think about that? Bogus, copycat. <laughs> does Seth, can Seth tap into that information though? Um, the Joseph Communications, the channeled entity? Yes, I can actually grab Joseph, uh, the channel entity, and it's a big mixed bag of different things, light and dark. Um, what is Joseph's intentions? Well, to enlighten people, but also to get people to rely upon him. So that sounds like the same vibrational level as Cryon from what you said. Can you ask Seth if he thinks this Joseph and Cryon are kind of at the same vibration? Do you think Joseph and Cryon are the same vibration? Yes, that is correct. And so I like to kind of put things at a scale and basically we kind of got that the information that Abraham is pulling in sits above Cryon's information and like the purity of, you know, the white light that is in the information itself. Can you confirm that with Seth? Yes, that's mostly correct. Cool. So yeah, there's tons of great information out there and, I'm sure there's lots of cool stuff in Joseph's, you know, if someone would have to tell me what they want to know exactly about, because I don't, there's so many, uh, I mean, I could, I literally listen to Seth's stuff all the time and it's still like, it's so mind blowing that, you know, you kind of just got to pick one channel and listen to it for a couple of years before you move to the next one, really. <laughs> oh, really? I've never li listened to it. Yeah, it's so good. I, that's why I always wish you would uh, do some uh, channeling or whatever. 
Well, I mean, I can. I do channeling. But I know it would be great if I could just channel some sort of entity on a regular basis that everybody asks questions of. I tend to hop around quite a lot. I mean, but I could certainly do that. What yeah. is Soltec dreaming and the prophecies of the sons? Well, uh, it looks like a spiritual website, and we're just getting blasted with ads of different spiritual things. Oh. <laughs> looks like. I thought that was something he did. Sorry. Yeah, it looks like there's some. It's crazy, the depths of the Internet. There's so many. You know, but it is it is so cool. I I wish there were more people that were channeling that we could. I actually had this channeling book it's called how to channel and uh i think it'd actually be kind of cool if we probe the people that are in that book because there's some weird entities that you know no one really knows about you know more the more the merrier in in these probes because i mean you guys know me i only talk to like five different entities so yeah well we can um, definitely do that for the next one absolutely yeah. I'll find I'll find the book and I'll find I'll make a little list of because there's like the book is like about eight people or whatever, like who they channel and like what they think, you know, that channel is all about and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that could be the next one. Um, does Jane have anything else she wants to say? Uh, no, not really. No, that was that was basically it. We could have gone more in depth about the programming, but that that we can leave that for another time. Yeah, I don't know how much you want to get into that, uh, but I know that it's our goal to, you know, figure out a good way to kind of change. You know, the point of this was is that, OK, the secret doesn't really work. <laughs> um, you know, law of attraction might not work so great. So, you know, the heart of it is really how do we change our lives and and we're going to kind of get into this programming idea a little bit more in the future. Yes. Now, see, the law of attraction, as according to that book, is all about changing your conscious mind. But your soul and your subconscious can always override your conscious mind. So no matter how much you... Let's say you were in a horrible relationship and you never want to be in that situation ever again. And you're saying with your conscious mind, I'm not going back to that situation. But energetically running underneath the conscious mind are all the factors, all of the energy things that are drawing these types of people back into you. So no matter how much you say, I'm not going to do this again. You could inadvertently, and most people do, end up back in that same situation. And it happens so quickly, you don't even know you're getting yourself into it. Yeah. That's, that's why it's flawed, because it's only affecting the conscious mind. The conscious mind is relatively dumb compared to what is running underneath it. Yeah, honestly. Um, yeah, I wish more people were familiar with the Seth material and uh, maybe some Abraham's stuff because I could use more questions along uh, deeper deeper understanding of that stuff um the multi-dimensional god you know there's so many interesting bits in the uh seth material but you know now we can make the ruber material <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's true we could do that absolutely that's a brilliant idea so if anybody does have any questions um because i'm sure that these Probes always bring about a lot of chatter on the YouTube, a lot of chatter on the Discord, lots of emails being generated. Um, you know, by all means, then submit 
your questions, you could drop it down on the comments in YouTube because, you know, Mr. Robot reads those as well. For those of you that are not on the Patreon, not in the Discord, obviously, if you're in the Discord, you're a subscriber, then you just tag Mr. Robot. Um, so thank you very much. And I think that's what we can do. I think maybe we have found our, you know, one person to consult and channel. We could just use her. Yeah, totally. Until she reincarnates. When she reincarnates, then I won't be able to find her in the spirit world. Um, yeah, so some homework for everybody. I feel like people kind of watch these and then they might stop their their quest for information. The homework for everybody is go uh, start the audio book. It's on YouTube, Seth Speaks. You just type in Seth Speaks and there's like 20 chapters right there on YouTube. You can listen to for free. Wow. Pretty cool. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that information. I mean, it's always a pleasure doing videos with you. If you want to contact Mr. Robot direct, please email him at moongrass777 at gmail.com. He does do Reiki distance healing. So please contact him. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Liz.